Hello everybody, it's Nikki from the Mouths of Mums Cook Club. How are you? Happy Monday. Um, I hope you had a great weekend. I don't know if it's getting cold at your place, but it's getting a little bit chilly here. So I have got kids home and particularly during the winter time, I like to have dinner early. So I'm gonna get dinner on early tonight and hopefully by 6.30 we'll be fed, bathed and ready for some stories and bed and some homework too. So I'm going to cook two things tonight. Um, what I've got is a banana bread. Mondays I like to have um, a day at home where technically I'm supposed to be doing just the washing, the groceries, cleaning the house, doing all the catch up from the weekend. Um, today I did a little bit of work because we're planning something exciting on the mountain. But um, what I tend to do on a Monday is get some of those lunch or morning tea snacks organised. So I'm going to whip up a um, dark chocolate banana bread. Now this is a real treat. Normally my kids would just have a straight banana bread. Um, but today I'm going to put a little bit of dark chocolate in it as something special. A really cheap, um, really yummy, really nice rice dish that you can make up in a very short amount of time that will feed lots of hungry tummies for not a lot of money. I actually calculated it earlier on today and it's about two dollars per person. So let's get started on our banana bread. The other thing I like about this recipe that we've got is that you all you need is literally a bowl and a mixing spoon and a fork to mash your bananas. So basically there are two stages in the, in the recipe. Put all of your wet ingredients together, add all of your dry ingredients, mix it together and then um, stick it in. Um, these are fresh bananas. They were just, they're probably even a little bit green, but I didn't have any old ones. But what I do is if, if you've ever got a banana that's starting to get too old and you're not gonna be able to make a banana bread straight away, literally peel it, pop it in a Ziploc bag and then throw it in the freezer. Then when you do want to make a banana bread, you can get that out of the freezer and throw it straight into your banana bread. It will go a little bit black, so it won't look the best, but once it's cooked, you won't notice the difference, particularly when you've got it in with your dark chocolate. So I'm just going to give those um, bananas a quick little mash there. So you can see that technically they should have been a little bit riper than that. <clears throat> but that's okay. That is all fine. <clears throat> So you could add anything to this. If you didn't have your four bananas, you could actually add anything. If you had some, um, if it was um, stone fruit season and you had some peaches or some plums that were going out of date, you could switch that out. If you had some apples that were no longer as fresh as your babes would eat them, you could actually um, grate those up and you could pop them in. Um, you can add a carrot in here if you want to. I have even been known to have a little bit of rainbow salad mix, which sounds disgusting, but it is zucchini, beetroot, carrot, and um, I have been known to throw some of that leftover in with my bananas. So there we go. <laughs> you didn't know that, did you, Tobes? No. <laughs> but you know what? The nice thing about a, um, a banana bread or anything like this is you really can throw anything that you like in. You could almost just call it a fruit bread. And if you didn't have any fresh fruit, you could make up a mixture of some dates and some sultanas if you wanted to as well. That's the thing about a banana bread, you know, it really is just a base and um, you can throw anything in there. So there we go, that's looking as though I could feed a little toddler or a baby, but um, I'm just gonna pop that in there as my base. So I like to have lots and lots of banana in there, lots of fruit, makes it quite dense, but that's good. This will freeze beautifully, it will slice up really nicely. Um, and it's quite good for them too. So what we're going to do is literally throw in our two eggs, pop those in there. We've got um, just one teaspoon of vanilla essence. I like to use the one with the, um, with the vanilla bean in there, but if you didn't have that, it would be totally fine. I have got um, 50 grams here of softened butter. Oh, it's a bit cold today, you can tell. It's not as soft as it normally would be. So that's butter. And then what I like to add for a little bit of extra flavour is some coconut oil. Obviously, again, that's a little bit harder than normal because it's quite cold today. I've had the house open. I've been vacuuming and cleaning today. So if you didn't like your coconut oil, you could double the butter. If you didn't want to use any butter, you could... 
double the coconut oil. In your banana bread. So all you're really wanting to do is make sure that you're getting that butter and that coconut milk through and getting your eggs nicely and evenly distributed will give them a little zhuzh like that. Great thing about this is this is actually a brilliant one. I tried to get um, one of the kids to come down and make this for me this afternoon while I was doing the paella because they can. There's, um, there's no knives, there's lots of measuring which is perfect for kids. Actually really good when they're starting to learn to count and measure and weigh. Um, no knives, no appliances for you to worry about little fingers getting caught in. It's literally just a bit of stirring. So there we go. All those wet ingredients are in there now. So all we need to do, and again, it is quite rustic, so I certainly don't worry about um, sifting anything as it goes in. So we've just got um, a full cup of self-raising flour there. In the recipe on the website, it's actually got the plain flour plus the baking powder, but obviously that's the same as using self-raising. Um, so we're just gonna throw in our one cup of self-raising flour. This is just um, one and a bit teaspoons of cinnamon. If you had a mixed spice, you could use that instead of cinnamon. We'll pop that in there. This is literally um, half a cup of caster sugar. Again, if you didn't have caster sugar and you had a nice brown sugar, or um, you could use that one as well. This is um, some almond meal. This is actually something I haven't tried before and I saw it today and thought it would be fun. It's a little bit browner than your normal oven, um, oven meal, almond meal, because it's actually oven roasted. So I'll be interested to see how that flavor goes. So you've got your oven roasted almond meal. And then I like to use shredded coconut just because I really like texture in um, in my recipes. So we'll throw in half a cup of shredded coconut. Now the last little thing that I pop in is um, just one teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda. The only thing I'd say about this is to absolutely make sure that you've got no little tiny lumps hiding in your bicarb because I don't know about you but if you've ever accidentally left a little lump in there and then you've eaten it, it's a bit like eating a teaspoon of salt. So there we go, I'm going to throw that bicarb in. And then literally give that a good mix around. If you wanted to, you could absolutely do this in your food processor, or you could do it in your um, your mix master, you know, your stand mixer, if you liked that. But I do like the way this comes into a real nice kind of bread. It ends up making it much more of a a bread that you can slice up. You can even put, um, once it's completely cooled, you can even put a little bit of butter on that if you wanted to for the kids' lunches. So what I will do is then, um, once we've put this in the oven, it will cook away for, it's usually between 30 and 40 minutes because I put it into a loaf tin. If you wanted to have that cook a lot faster, you could put this into um, little muffin muffin papers, you could put it into the little patty tins, um, or you could actually spread it into a, um, a bigger tray so that it was a thinner mixture. So there we go, you can see that that's quite, um, quite doughy, it's not a liquidy cake mix at all, but that is gonna come together nicely. So then literally all we need to do is pop that in. Now I really, really like to, it doesn't matter even if your, your tray is um, non-stick, I really like to use some baking paper. So all I've done is put a little bit of butter on that tray there. And then the quickest way that I do is I literally have two pieces of baking paper. So you can see that I've put one that way and one that way. That's a super quick way to get your um, to get your tin lined. So there we go. I'm going to throw that right into the middle of that tray. Now, do you know what I forgot to do? <laughs> because I'm talking too much carrying on, I forgot to mix the dark chocolate through. So what you would do at the last minute is you would mix your dark chocolate through, but let's, um, let's do something a little bit fun. Let's give the kids a little dark chocolate surprise. So if you were just doing your normal um, banana bread, that's where you'd finish. But because I promised you all a little bit of dark chocolate, we better pop it in. So all I'm going to do, I've just got some dark chocolate bits here. So literally, let's just do this, one, two, and every now and then, that's gonna melt through quite nicely. 
So every now and then the kids will get a little chocolate surprise. Now if you um, were making this for the weekend and you didn't want to send it off to school, you could also put some really nice, um, you could put some nuts through this. I love um, walnuts with banana, but obviously as all of us are not allowed to send nuts to school, we can't actually do that for this one. The other thing which I love doing is making a really nice kind of crumble topping for this. So once you were about halfway through the cooking, what you could do is you could make up a nice mixture of some coconut, some brown sugar, and you could sprinkle that over the top. So that is looking cool. Let's pop him in the oven en route to our stove. Oh, <laughs> Toby's wondering about the white chocolate. <laughs> what I'm going to do is later on when it comes out, I melted that. Um, Do you remember? And we actually melted that and I put a little blob on top of each slice. Oh. So there you go. I haven't put the white chocolate in, but you could put your white chocolate in if you didn't like your dark chocolate. So let's throw that in the oven. The oven is back to working, which is good. And then what I do, because my oven doesn't cook very evenly, after 20 minutes, I'm going to rotate that around and um, see how he's going. So while that's going, what I'm going to do now is get our um, paella started or our paella. Um, this is a lovely, I love one pot dishes. I just find it so easy to be able to throw everything into one dish and we put that in the middle of the table. Everybody helps themselves. It's quite communal. It's lots of fun and um, it's not very much washing up. So let's have a look. I don't know if you've ever made anything like this. Paella is kind of like, um, it lives in the uh, risotto family, but it's obviously from a different part of the world. We're going to make a seafood paella. So your basic ingredients for that is obviously rice. So we've got two cups of um, that arborio rice or that risotto rice, which is freely available in the supermarket. Um, that kind of makes your foundation. Then I've got some onions, I've got some garlic here, I've got some olive oil, which we'll pop in in a moment. And then you can buy a, um, a ready-made paste if you want to um, from some of the fine grocery stores and things like that. It's a beautiful mix and I have used it before. But I wanted to show you that if you didn't have that, you can actually use a mixture here of um, turmeric, um, a, a paprika and a cumin. And then I've got some little saffron threads They've been soaking in a little bit of water there. Um, so we're going to put that in. And then what I like to do is put a whole lot of veggies in there and then put our um, marinara mix on the top. Now this is just the marinara mix that you get from the supermarket. I picked that up today. And this is literally, well, don't worry about those beautiful prawns there, but that's your normal marinara mix. So I got half a kilo and that was $12 a kilo. So all of that seafood there only cost me $6. And then what I've done just for a little bit of visual interest is I've bought five green prawns that are still in their shell and we'll pop those on top at the last minute, which will make that look lovely. So that pan's coming up to heat. It's not on a high heat, it's on a moderate heat. So the first thing I'm going to do there is put our little bit of olive oil in. That's about two tablespoons worth of olive oil. So we'll pop that in there. And then we will pop our, um, this is just half a medium onion. Again, as with all of my recipes, you can play. You can add more onion, you can have less if you don't like it. You could use a red onion, it is completely up to you. So we'll throw that in there. And you can hear that starting to sizzle, sizzle, sizzle. Now, even though we're putting in lots of spices in a moment, I do still really like to put a little bit of salt in. The salt's going to help the onions sweat off a little bit as well, but it does add, it does give you another dimension. We'll pop our little bit of garlic in there at the same time. So there we go, just a gentle heat so you're not actually um, burning any of that onion or garlic. Just to keep the flavour really nice and gentle in there. Now if you didn't have a big fry pan like this you could use a smaller fry pan. Obviously if you've got a tiny little family or just um, smaller children you don't need to make as much as I do but I pretty much feed um, well three adults my hubby and I and then Toby who eats I think more than both of us put together because he is a growing boy and then um, the two girls who are in primary school. So this will pretty much feed everybody. So then we're going to put our risotto rice in there. And we'll just give that a stir through. And 
to let that sit just for a minute. And as with any risotto, what we're going to do is we're going to wait until this rice is just gone translucent. And while we're doing that, let's add in our spices. So what you can do, if you like it nice and spicy, is you could also put some cayenne pepper in there if you wanted to. But because um, because I've got the little kids, I won't make that too super spicy. What I tend to do is put a little tiny bit of extra spice on the table. So you can see that those beautiful golden colours that are synonymous with a um, paella, a Spanish paella, are starting to come through in the rice there. So the thing I love about a paella is it is a so once you've got everything in and it's bubbling away, I'm just going to turn that up a tiny little bit because I've dumped all that rice in. It's um, lost a bit of its heat. So what we'll do there is pop that saffron in. Just that little bit of water has gone through. Again, if you didn't have saffron threads, feel absolutely free to just use a little bit of saffron sprinkle. I was very lucky. One of my friends... Um, Teenage sons, well he was about 19. So now what I've got over here is um, about two cups of chicken stock. If you've got chicken stock that you've made, take it out of the freezer and use that. If not, just use your um, stock cubes. So this is going to look like way too much stock at the moment. But don't forget that that rice is going to soak that up beautifully. There we go. We'll bring him right up so he starts to bubble away. So what you're going to want to do there is... Um, Get him right up to heat and what you're going to do is let that bubble just a little bit and then as soon as that's come to heat we'll put the um we'll let that cook until it's about halfway cooked through and then we'll add our veggies and our seafood so if you ever wonder how to make something boil quickly pop the lid on that will always make that um a lot quicker so let's have a look here. If you didn't want to use that marinara mix, you could add in any seafood that you wanted to. Um, what the restaurants will do, which looks absolutely amazing, is they'll actually have the scallops in their shell, they'll have the mussels in their shell, um, you know, all of that, and that looks incredibly dramatic. Um, obviously, that's a lot more expensive, um, so I do just like to use that marinara mix. It's a really quick solution for during the week. So I can hear him bubbling already. Look at that. Straight away that's come up to um, come up to the boil. So what you want to do, and don't once you put the lid on this once and for all, don't worry if it catches on the bottom, because the authentic um, pears, as far as I've been told by those who've cooked them for me, um, actually it's okay if it sticks a tiny little bit on the bottom. So you can see that that rice is already starting to cook through. And then what I do is kind of add the veggies not too, not too far in. Okay, so we'll, let him, we'll just give him two more minutes. Um, what else do I need to tell you? So we have got um, lots of things coming up this week. We've got a new review coming up this week, which is going to be lovely. We're going to be sending mums hundreds of vouchers and we'll get you to go in store and pick up something delicious to try with your families. Um, it's a product that is deliciously delicious, um, perfect for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Um, what we'll be doing is we'll be getting you guys to cook with it, to eat it, to enjoy it on its own and tell us what you think. Um, something else that I'm going to let you all know about this week is that um, when you become a member of Mouths of Mums, you've got a profile. So um, if you want to get involved in any of our review campaigns, we need you to actually tell us a little bit about yourselves and your families so that we can match you up with the right campaigns. So that's called your profile. And so what I've decided to do, um, oh, there we go, look, he's bubbling away very happily there. But what we're going to do is from now until the end of July, everybody who fills out their profile completely goes in the draw to win a $500 voucher. It's really important for us. It actually helps us get more campaigns across the line that you guys can enjoy. Um, and it means that we can match up the right people with the right products. 
So I think we're ready now to pop our veggies and our seafood in. The other thing about the rice is you don't want to get it too, um, you don't want it to be too overcooked and stodgy. I still like it to have a tiny little bit of bite in it when, um, when we serve it. So you can see that that's thickening up really nicely. Um, a few minutes ago it looked like it was literally swimming in, uh, swimming in the ocean, but now it's kind of getting really nice. So that's all that starch that's coming out from the rice, so that's giving you a really nice thick sauce. You might even put the rest of that stock powder in there. The rest of that stock in there. There we go. So that's stocked again. Now what we can do is our set and forget. So what I'm going to do is put the veggies that can um, take the longest in the bottom. Actually, I'm going to put a few in the bottom. Kind of like, you know, this is where you can have a bit of fun and um, play creative director in your kitchen. So there we go. They've kind of disappeared. Then what we will do is I'll put... Put the stalks of the um, of the broccolini so you can see there with that broccolini I've just kind of shredded that up nicely nice and finely just to give you um, a nice mixture you could just throw the stalks the big stalks on the top if you wanted to but I like to um, that way everybody's getting um, some veggies all over the place there we go So you can see why that's a one pot dinner because there are so many veggies in there. You really could go to town and um, add as many as you like. So what I'm going to do there is put our, um, spread our marinara mix all around. It's also got a bit of parsley through it. You've probably seen that in the supermarket in that mix, which is great because it means you don't need to worry too much about adding anything else. So there's a lovely mixture in here. If you don't, as I say, if you don't like mussels or you don't like a particular piece of fish or whatever, you can just be particular and um, add your own seafood. You could just buy some garlic prawns even if you wanted to. Um, I saw some beautiful packs of garlic prawns for eight dollars today, which would have been, um, which would be delicious. But you can see that there's those little calamari rings in there as well, and it's all giving it some really nice. Um, Nice dimension. So that's going to all cook through quite quickly now. I'm actually thinking I probably should have waited a couple more minutes because that seafood does cook quite quickly. But that's all right. It'll be fine. It will be completely fine. It's a Monday night and the Queen isn't coming for dinner. It's just my beautiful children and my husband, whom I love and adore, and they are quite happy. So now what I'm going to do, so these little prawns, obviously you don't need to do them, but it's just a bit of fun. Obviously they're going to go beautifully brightly orange, and it's just a bit of decoration. So I'm just going to pop them in there. Five prawns for five people. They're going to sit in there. There we go. And then what I'll do is put a few more little bits of capsicum around the place. go. Now what I'll do is I'll just turn that stove down a bit so we're not, there we go, because we'll pop the lid back on in a minute and as that rice finishes off cooking, that seafood will cook through nicely. And then put that broccolini in again. You can see that I've saved just a few pieces and it really is just for decoration. I mean you could throw it in and just completely mush it around, it's totally up to you. It just depends on the peas, yep. <laughs> it's good to have you there, Tobes, reminding me. What I do with the peas is I find if I cook the peas for too long, they go a little bit grey. So what I like to do with those peas is just sprinkle those over the top at the last minute. But what I might do so that I can let you guys go and get your children their dinner is I'll just show you what that would look like. So. Just before I serve that, I would just drop those few little peas on the top there. Doink, doink, doink. And then what you want to do when you serve that is you would put a little crack of pepper, like so. And then the other thing I've got, sorry mate, I'll just scoot through there, is I've got some big wedges of lime and lemon. So whatever you've got there, but obviously it's seafood, so what we would do is we'd just nestle those in there to serve. And then you can imagine you would literally pop that onto, there we go, how's that looking? And if you had some more fresh herbs in the garden, 
you could throw those over the top but you can see that very very shortly that is going to be a delicious paella so there we go goodbye prawns they are literally that's probably only going to have another seven to ten minutes and then it will be completely ready there we go what do you think man it's good does it look good yeah you'll probably eat about half of that won't you probably <laughs> So there we go. Thank you for joining me. I won't make you wait around to see the cake finished and the paella finished. But what I will do is I will take some photos, I promise, and I will pop those um, onto the Mouths and Mums website so that you can actually have all those ingredients written down for you. Um, the dark chocolate banana bread's already on there. Um, but what I'll do is I'll include a link in this post once we put it up onto our Facebook page. Um, we'll also put it onto our YouTube channel. So go searching there. Um, I'm being a bit slack with getting those up. I will have to do those soon. Um, but there's lots more coming. I've got some special guests coming up in the next couple of weeks. We're planning that too because I thought you'd like to meet some other, there's some real mums. Somebody actually asked me if, they could, if I could go and make a raw caramel slice with them. So we might do that quite soon. And then... Um, I've got um, one of our Mouths and Mums members who we actually met through a promotion. She's going to do some really nutritious um, lunchtime snacks for us as well and some lunchbox treats. So thanks for joining us. It is always wonderful to be with you. If you enjoy these Cook Club Lives, please give me a thumbs up and um, thanks again for having us in your kitchen. Lots of love. Bye-bye.